God, I am so fucking excited right now. Well, I mean, if we're gonna do it, let's do it. Here we go. Super definition. Nah, I'm just kidding. We can't do it in anything but Ultra HD. I fucking hate this shit so much, dude. We come to you now with revelations about last week's attack in London. An anonymous source provided this video. It shows Quentin Beck, a.k.a. Mysterio, moments before his death. Are you sure you want to commence the drone attack? Columbia! Oh, I'm getting old school Spidey film vibes. Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker. Right at the end of Far From Home. Here we go. Are you Spider-Man's girlfriend? He's in his back. Are you Spider-Man's girlfriend? How the hell would you know that she's- Don't tell her you want to do this ever again! Edgy, I'm so sorry, but I can't see anything with your hand in my- I'm sorry. Huh? No. Huh? <laughs> Best sandwich in Queens. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I'm so sorry. Oh. No. Oh. oh no. Oh no. Peter, I don't know what to do. Oh. Oh, I, oh my I didn't god. See anything. Um, I didn't this see isn't anything. what it looks like, Happy. <laughs> you messed me up, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Did they seriously never meet? Is that, is that is that here? I mean, maybe it's not such a big deal. Spider menace. Governments around the world. Love it. Investigation. Oh, I love him. Well, now this city and the world see him. Why are his truly... friends like up there? Drones used in the London attack were designed by Stark Industries. So is Iron Man gonna be made to be a villain now? I, I literally helped him find the vulture. I didn't know that. And I helped him hack a suit once. And oh God. So, in Spider-Man's illegal vigilantism, you were his main accomplice. <laughs> Missing Stark technology. Ew. <clears throat> That's great. <gasps> Thank you. No! Good news, Peter. Get the fuck out of here! Are you serious? Whoa, bro! What the hell? Whoa, 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 no, no, no. go back, go back. I, I, I haven't been absorbing anything. What the hell, dude? Charlie fucking cuts his back! Oh my god, Mr. Murdoch, thank you. That's thank Oh, he looks so good. You're welcome. Perfect. He looks so good. Oh my god. Oh shit. Yeah, he has that. How did you just do that? He has that. I'm a really good lawyer. He has that blind uh fucking radar sense. Holy shit, dude. I cannot believe Daredevil's back. Well, I, I I remember I saw the news report, but I can't believe he's back in this movie. Yes, Tyson. This is safe. Welcome to the spiritual oasis. He's just going to live with them now? Well, what are your other favorite things? I love your relentless optimism. Yeah. I am a glass half- They're really cute together. Yeah. I really like how you're a people person. I love you. Okay, I, I'm actually, I'm kind of buying. I know what I said in my Spider-Man video, but- the romance that she has with Peter feels probably the least convincing out of the three that we have with Peter and Mary Jane and Peter and Gwen. I'm actually, I'm starting to dig their relationship. We're oh covering boy. the first day oh of no. senior year for Midtown High's most famous student. Go get him, Tiger. Or That's MJ's thing. Spider. <laughs> it's the two of flip guy. I'm Spider-Man's best friend. You come at my boy, you come at Flash Thompson. <sighs> what the hell happened to his hair? Oh, oh, he, oh, he has the blonde hair of the comics Flash? Still doesn't make him Flash in my mind. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Welcome you back to Midtown High. Yeah, how do you welcome Spider-Man to- It's an honor to serve you, sir. It's not. <laughs> Some of the students put this together for you. No, you did that. I, you did that. I helped a little bit. Oh. Hannibal Burris, still awesome. God, this must feel so awkward, like adults treating him like their their idol. Like they're treating a teenager like their idol. I imagine this is what happens when celebrities try to do like normal college life, like Emma Watson going to Brown. I imagine that's probably what it's like. Oh, are they gonna kiss? Finally, some privacy. It is so crazy down there. Ned's gonna third wheel so hard. MIT is obviously the dream, but if we match up our backup schools, then 
either way, we'll all be together in Boston. If you expect disappointment, then you can never really get disappointed. Come on. Me. That's so me. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> fresh start. Yeah. You're not. You're never gonna get a fresh start as long as you're, everybody knows you're Spider-Man. First one's here. It's okay. It's a backup school. Peter. No. Is he not? Get, how's he not? Oh well, I guess he's he's Spider-Man. I guess because he's Spider-Man, they're not letting him in because like he should be able to get in. He's like a really smart student. It, it doesn't make sense why he'd be getting rejected unless like they it's because like it has something to do with his like the public knowing he's Spider-Man. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Well, don't because he will just make me clean it. <laughs> this is our only shot. It's here or nowhere. Hey, three. One of them's gonna get left out. Are they all gonna get left out? In light of recent controversy, we are. Oh, is it? It is. Be oh my God! Yeah, it is because they're they're affiliated with Spider-Man. Expect disappointment, and you will never get disappointed. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. See? Boston. <laughs> this is where. Oh, I see the lights there. Yep, this is where he goes to Doctor Strange to change what he did. Yep, there it is. I'm a the most famous person in hey, the world. Hey, it's Wong. Try not to slip. We don't Yo, is he? Oh, no, that he's at the old place. I was about to say, like, is he with uh, Shang-Chi? Maybe you could go back in time and make it so that he never did. I don't have the time stone anymore. That's right, because all the stones got destroyed, didn't they? Why no, they have. Iron Man had, like, the gauntlet, and they still had him, right? The runes of Kaf Kaal. Oh, it's just a standard spell of forgetting. It won't turn back time, but at least people will forget that you were ever Spider-Man. Just leave me out of this. That's not what happened in the trailer. Wong told them not to do it. What the hell is that? Here we go. The entire world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Including me. Everyone? Uh, can't some people still know? What is a net? He's my best friend, so it's really important to me that Ned knows. Gotta yeah, change it again. Dude, it's getting more and more fucked up. Okay, okay I'm done. It. I'm done. I, I swear I'm done. Oh, my Aunt May! <laughs> nah, but my Aunt May should really know. Peter, stop tampering with the spell. Oh, boy. Happy? No, I'm annoyed. <laughs> it's a nickname. Harold Happy Hogan. <laughs> Here we go! Multiverse is opening. Everyone that knew that I was Spider-Man before should still know! <laughs> He's still trying to... Oh, it's all getting so fucked up. Here we go. Every past Spidey, every past Spider-Man and Spidey villain is coming in. Woo! You changed my spell. You don't do that. I told you. If he talks, he can just change the spell. You're, you're just a kid. One of the things that I hate. I'm so sorry about you and your friends not getting into college. You didn't even think to plead your case with them first before you asked me to brainwash the entire world. What was it, point number four or five in my video that he's a fucking idiot? I present to you, Exhibit A. I need to come and talk to someone. I'm trying to get Ned and MJ a second chance of getting in. What's in it for me? Me. You know what I want. Oh, okay, I'll God. tell everyone that you're my best friend. Flash, please help me. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So Stark Network. Oh boy, here we go, the Doc Ock fight. Ignition. Unavailable. <sighs> yep, he's in his suit. Yep, he's, yep, and this is where he talks to a person in the car. How does he know it's her without like you can just like look with his like with his own eyes and just know that it's her? Like the like the Stark technology in his suit couldn't even identify. Hi, I, I, Peter Parker. You do know you're in the street, right? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's so inappropriate, dude. You are not gonna. Don't let MIT be dumb like me. MIT is dumb. No, I, I'm saying don't let MIT be dumb. Uh oh, here we go, Doc Ock. Ooh, here we go, baby. Oh, I'm so fucking excited. Door's Do they not have, like, can she not just manually unlock it? What do you mean the door's locked? So when you lock the door from the front, you can't get out of the back? That doesn't make any sense. Here we go. Here we go. Alfred Molina, baby. Hello, Peter. What have you done with my machine? Oh my gosh, Spider-Man 2! The power of- Yes! In the palm of my hand. Oh my god, the palm of my hand. 
Holy shit, that's so awesome. But he fucking, he made up with uh, Tobey Maguire in the end of the movie, so why the hell is he still, like, mad? Should've killed your little girlfriend when I had the chance. That's the wrong MJ. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. I'm actually kind of digging this. The spider legs, like, against the the octopus arms. I'm actually kind of digging this. It's pretty cool, gotta admit. I'm coming! See, if he saves the, the Chancellor's life or whatever, then she'll definitely let them into MIT. Oh my god, it's the amazing Spider-Man. God, he's such a cool villain. Here we go. He's gonna take off the... What the? Whoa! It, it's absorbing his nanotechnology from his suit? Oh, damn! That, so that's how he got all red. He's dead. He, he didn't just die, did he? Oh, no, he came back. All right. Oh, it's because it's his technology, so now it's... Oh! Yeah, he has no control over them anymore. Because they're technically wearing his suit. I'm going to talk to admissions about your friends, and I'm going to talk to them about you. That is not how this works. I am pretty sure that is not how college works. Oh my god, here we go! Woo! This is my man too! Yeah! <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, what? Osborne? How did he know it was Osborne? Oh, oh, it was Doc Ock that said it. But how would Doc Ock know that the Green Goblin is Norman Osborn? I just, I still don't get that. Oh my god, it's the lizard! It started pulling in everyone who knows Peter Parker's Spider-Man from every universe into this one. After you left, I detected an otherworldly presence. I pursued it into the sewers where I found that... Dr. Kurt Connors. Spell? Is it magic? <laughs> what is this, a birthday party? Man of science. On the bridge. He was like a... Like a flying green elf. <laughs> My friends and I just got a second chance to get into MIT and... If the school sees me fighting these- Oh, you are such monsters. a brat. You are such a fucking brat. I would be so pissed at him right now. How did you do that? Lots of birthday parties. <laughs> Whoa. One shot, send them here, move on, you're welcome. Scooby-Doo this shit. <laughs> such a bad line. Please, Scooby-Doo this shit. Stop. Please stop. Maybe just run it by us next time, you know? That way, when you're thinking, hey, I'm about to do something that could break the universe, we could, like, help you. She's so cool. You need to marry this girl. So we get the rest of the guys. You zap them, Dr. Magic, we'll send them back. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> Dickheads. <laughs> oh, is that a dinosaur? It's Dr. Kurt Connors, man. A disturbance near a military research facility outside of the city is that Electro? say that they saw a monster flying through the air. Oh no, that's Green Goblin, never mind. No, no, it is Electro! Electro can fly, can he? Ooh, new suit. It's the black suit. The black and gold suit. Boom! Oh, it is Electro! Yeah, I was right, it is Electro! I was right the first time. What the hell are you doing? Nope. It's not physical. They got the fucking, they got the dubstep fucking electro soundtrack. They have his theme. This is not helping. God, this is to, I'm getting so many Amazing Spider-Man 2 flashbacks. What is happening? Peter, it's me. Hey! Holy shit! I forgot, they, were, they became friends at the end of Spider-Man 3. So I guess they're not all, they don't all hate Peter because Peter did befriend some of them. Like Kurt Connors, right? Didn't they kind of... Thanks. Sorry. Hey, it's about. Thomas Hayden Church, right? Yeah, and it's Jamie Foxx! Hell yeah! Oh, he looks so much better with the Come yellow on. electricity. Hey, um... Man, he looks good. You sound really cool. <laughs> yep, got him. Oh. What is this? Oh, wow, that was fast. Connors? <laughs> Wait, you know this creature? Yeah, they're from the same universe. Last I recall, you had bad teeth, glasses, and a comb-over. Did you get a makeover? <laughs> yeah, he looks good, that's what I'm saying. Where are we? 
It's complicated. A wizard's dungeon. <laughs> wizards could do any of this without you, so. Oh no, they're gonna have a they have a touching moment. Tree monster or like a scientist that turned into a tree? It's just a tree, man. <laughs> Oh shit! There we go! There's the mask! Coward. Oh, you so good! To conquer. You can't escape yourself! No! That's the fucking infamous mask, goddammit! That mask is iconic! One of the guys you're looking for just walked in. Green Goblin just walked in? Norman. This is my nephew. Oh, what? My son. He's dead? I can't even, I don't even know, like, where this is in, like, the original Tobey Maguire series. Well, he needs help, and maybe they all do. But you don't mean, no, me, th this isn't my problem. What do you mean it isn't your problem? You brought them here, you- Their chance of getting help is way better back where they came from. That's the best thing that we can do for them. For them? Or for yourself? Yeah, stop being a selfish- Is he gonna recognize Doc Ock and Otto? Octavius. They both died, fighting Spider-Man. Is this how they all turn against him? And a couple of years later... Doc Ock drowned. Doc Ock. Drowned. Drowned in the river with your machine. That's nonsense. Yep. He doesn't rem... I was about to turn into pure energy and then... He exploded. And then... And then do I die? Nope. He was imprisoned. We can't send them back. Not yet. Why? You have to save them. Some of these guys are gonna die. Their sacrifice means infinitely more than their lives. It's got a point. I'm with Strange on this one. Spider-Man always got be goody two shoes. If they die, they die. They die. They just gotta die. This is where he takes it. This is where Peter takes it. Here we go. Don't. Ooh. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> oh wow, he like used his own web against him. Welcome to the astral plane, Peter. How are you doing that? I have no idea. Is this a spidey sense? Is this spidey sense like still like subconsciously doing it? Oh, you could just go back in like that. Ooh! Man, that is cool! And I'm getting so many, like, Doctor Strange, like, the movie vibes. Oh, yeah, if you guys came out during Christmas, that would have been nice. Is he stuck in an infinite loop? Oh, no, did it break? The mirror dimension is just geometry? You're great at geometry! Divide my body! What?! This is a different dimension. There's no way, like, traditional geometry should allow him to fucking get an advantage. That's so... You know what's cooler than magic? Math. Math. Don't do this. I have to try. Dude, what happened? I just had a fight with Dr. Strange and I totally won. What? Look, and I stole his <laughs> ring thing. You could have just left us to die. Why didn't you? Because that's not who he is. Goody two-shoes Spider-Man. If I can fix what happened to you, then when you go back, things will be different, and you might not die fighting Spider-Man. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Oh my god, that's awesome. I have it all under control. He's never had anything under control. Okay, so for me, MJ, please just take this. Gonna kiss him? No way, that's his girlfriend, no way. She'll do it. Oh, uh, they've turned all these villains into joke machines. Like, they're so much, like, lighter and not as, like, serious as they were in the old movies. It's kind of sad, but that's what, the, I'm, that's what the MCU does to, like, every character. And I'm afraid that's what's going to happen to, like, Charlie Cox, too. And it, uh, that's what's going to happen to Daredevil. And that just makes me so sad. Thirsty. Fresh water or salt? You know, because you're an octopus. What? Yeah, What? Fresh water it is. How'd you end up like that anyway? Yeah. Fell into a vat of electric I eels. Place where fell in. I fell into a vat of electric eels. Wow, like almost word for word. I fell into a super collider. Damn. <laughs> Gotta be careful where you fall. 
Wow, that's so cool. Like, the original Spider-Man trilogy villain talking to, like, the amazing Spider-Man, like, series villain. When I get out of this, we're gonna run you and you You killed him! It's so quiet. The voices are gone. He's back. It's me. Oh, wow, new suit. Yeah, you're welcome. And... Oh, I thought something bad was gonna happen. I was like, that's too- that was way too ha- that was way too good. I felt like it's almost too good to be true. Oh, is that the goblin juice? Just you. Just so, me. Wow, so- oh no. I heard the goblin for a second. Is that just his voice? Does his voice just naturally sound evil? Keep an eye on the lights. When they're all green, it means that all the electricity in your body's dissipated. Oh, where is he? Uh, JJ's time. here. Oh, this is the part where Electro breaks out. I remember. There's a spidey sense. That's some neat trick. Oh, it, it was the goblin! He was the goblin! Oh, that's so cool. I can't believe I actually got that. No more darker half. Did you really think that I'd let that happen? Oh, man. Yo, I didn't even have spidey sense, and I was... I could detect the goblin in his voice. Yeah, his voice gets all cackly. This is where they turn. Norman, no, Ryan, lapdog. You should have you should have taken the goblin juice out while you had the chance. <laughs> Taste it off. <laughs> yep, there he is. And now here we go. This is where Electro breaks out. Are they all siding with Norman? Ooh. There's a shot from the trailer. Yep, there it is. There's the shot from the trailer. That's how I knew Electro broke out. Oh man, that is that is some Joker vibes. Oh, Blizzard Two. Man, I can't believe we got the Sinister Six now. Here we go. She's gonna take the Goblin juice out of them. Why didn't you- if you had it already, why didn't you just use it, like, right away? It didn't work. Oh, God. I love- I love how brutal this goblin is. Reminds me of the first spot. Did she just die?! Oh, shit. Oh. Now she's definitely dead. What?! That's bullshit. She is. Hey, hey, I'm here. How is she up first too? That's bullshit. She should be dead. She she survived a glider crashing into her and a a, a pumpkin bomb. And with great power, there must also come great responsibility. There's the line. I'm actually, I'm not mad that this is coming from Aunt May. I mean, honestly, I've been. If you saw my old Spider-Man, my, uh, my Spider-Man video about why I hate Tom Holland, like, I was just saying, like, I was talking about how Aunt May, like, didn't have any, like, emotional scenes with Peter that, like, show, like, the importance she held in his in Peter's life. And fi I'm glad we finally got one. What happened? Are you okay? okay. Yeah, you're okay. What happened? Okay, we we'll catch your She's breath dead. right here. She's dead. Look at her. Oh, I had a feeling it, it, they're gonna show, like, she actually got, like, cut or something, like, in her, like, midsection or... Like I said, I really don't care about this Aunt May. So this Aunt May was never doing anything for was never doing anything for me. So I really don't care. This is not hitting me at all. And she's dead. There it is. May's gone. She gone, Peter. <laughs> so sad. You gave me nothing. There was no. There was nothing between these two in any of the movies before that led to me caring about this relationship. All right. I, I said it in the. Or why why Tom Holland's the worst Spider-Man video? Like, this relationship just never felt real to me. I never cared. All she was was just comedic relief that all these guys were in love with and they wanted to fuck. All right. But with this Aunt May, you get nothing but scenes of all these different guys wanting to fuck her. Hey May, how you doing? What are you wearing? Something skimpy, I hope. <laughs> well, we didn't order that. Some house. I think I'm gonna go change the sterno under the vegan lasagna. She never really held any real importance in Peter's life. So the, him losing her right now honestly doesn't mean anything to me. I would have I would have been sadder if like MJ or Ned died cuz their relationship was actually like built and developed and felt real. But like this is like there's nothing. I, I don't 
There was nothing. There was nothing like between these two. I, I don't. I can't remember a single scene where I was like, "Wow, gosh, Aunt May." I can really see like how important she is to Peter. I can really see what she means to Peter. She's such a good motherly maternal figure in Peter's life, but they never gave Aunt May this Aunt May any scenes like that. So I, I really don't care. That everywhere. There's the first shot from the trailer. Everything Spider Man touches must suffer. To ruin. This is the tragic life of. This is the tragic story of Spider Man. You always lose those closest to him. Oh, is that Ned's place? So nothing. No. Time to send him back. Just gonna press the button, send him back. I just wish we could see him. Get the hell out of here. He is not actually magic. I just wish we could see Peter. That is so- What? That is so dumb. Unless there's something in the comics that explain why, like, Ned Leeds is actually magical. That's not- Woo! Holy shit, that's my man Andrew! Oh, he looks so good in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit again! Yes, this is exactly the suit I wanted! This is how they introduce him? They could've- They could've gotten a, a much cooler entrance for Andrew Garfield. Prove it. Prove what? That you're Peter Parker. <laughs> Proves Come nothing. On. Crawl around? Get the cobweb there. Since you're like up there. Yeah. Oh wow, that's smart. They got him to crawl. I guess you just keep doing it until we find the real one. No! Find Peter Parker. You can't bring the, the other Peters in like this! No, come on! This is such a lame way to bring the Spider-Men in! They need to... There, there needs to be a big... There he is. You can't do it like this, man. This is so dis... MJ, you were right. Low expectations and you're not going to get disappointed. I wanted, like... The, their theme music's to swell. I wanted them to come in at the final battle so they could make the big save. This is, this is, the, the, the Ned just brings them in just like all at once, like randomly. Like, come on, man. That's what I waited like years for. I waited a year of all these rumors of Andrew and Toby returning for that, for that scene. This is bullshit, bro. Oh, I think I talked about how he has, like, the web blood or whatever. Like, he doesn't have, like, the actual web shooters. Toby doesn't have the web shooters, so. We don't know where he is. And, um, honestly, right now we're all he really has left. Uh, is there some place that he might go that has meaning to him? Yeah, I, I, I think I know exactly where Top of the school? Be. Yep. Oh, what's Peter gonna think when he sees, a? Uh, Two other Spider-Men. Still not feeling Aunt May, man. You're still not getting me. There was no, there was nothing. You had no. There was like no, almost no relationship. There, he had a stronger relationship and a more realistic relationship with his friends than his aunt. Why, like, so like killing his aunt? Like, you really think that's gonna make us sad? There's some people here. Here we go. He's gonna meet his other. He's gonna meet the other Spider-Man. Ooh, that is such a badass shot. Oh, he doesn't have a doesn't have a suit. Please don't tell me that you know what I'm going through. They lost their they lost their uncle Ben's and they lost their like he lost his girlfriend. Toby lost his uncle Ben, like My Uncle Ben was killed. There it is. There we go. It was my fault. Yep. I Gwen, lost. Gwen Stacy. Well, I carried on, tried to um <laughs> Yeah, you listened to a, cl a clip of her graduation speech. I got rageful. Sure, wish we could have seen him again rageful in The Amazing Spider-Man 3, but... I hunted down the man who I thought did it. It didn't make it better. I want to kill him. The Goblin. I want to tear him apart. This is the least impactful death in the Spider-Man series, I'm sorry. This holds nothing to Uncle Ben and Gwen Stacy dying, alright? This is the least impactful. She told me that with great power... ...comes great responsibility. Wait, what? How do you know that? Uncle Ben said it. The day he died. Maybe she didn't die for nothing, Peter. Oh shit, this music! Yo, sounds like the old Spider-Man music. The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man music. Well, I got Connors. I've already cured him once, so no big deal. Yeah, he did get Connors. 
Do you have a best friend too? Nope. Neither of them have. I did. Oh, Harry Osborn. That's right. Why did I forget that? Yeah. Spider-Man 3. How did I forget that? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Are you okay? What are these romantic moments? They're so random. Like, these moments between these two are so random. Like, they just come out of nowhere. It's like... It's like... During the end of a phone call after, like, Peter got, like, Electro and the Sandman and, like... Does he miss Gwen? Peter! Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Did you mean, did you mean? All we gotta do is lure these guys someplace, right? Try to cure them while they try to kill us and then send them home. So wait, are you gonna go into battle dressed as a cool youth pastor? Or <laughs> you got your suit? Yeah. Where's your... Oh, yeah. Good. Forgot he has a suit under his clothes. Uh, it's my web fluid. It's for my web shooters. Why? Oh, they're gonna do the thing? Whoa! Talk about the web blood? So gross. How on earth does that even... Anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Look. Wow. That's so funny. They talked about his his organic web shooters. And I promise you, I won't turn into a supervillain and try to kill you. Hobgoblin? Hobgoblin? Maybe? We're gonna kick some ass. Cure some ass. Cure that ass. Stop! Stop with the writing! No, that is bad! Bad, bad, bad! That was too much. Here we go. Here we go. They're gonna show up in their spidey suits? Oh, yes. He looks so good in his spidey suit again. You okay? Oh, it's my back. Oh my god! That is so funny! You like make your own web fluid in your body. <laughs> I'd rather not talk about this. I don't want to like pry, but I just no, think it's cool. I... There's the leak. There's the leak scene. Like, does it just come out of your wrists or does it come out of anywhere else? Oh god. I had a web block. Well, yeah, Spider Man 2. Existential crisis stuff. There it is. Yeah. What are like some of the craziest villains that you guys have fought? This is so cool. An alien made out of black goo. Once. Yep, symbiote. I found an alien too, on Earth and in space. Oh. Yeah, he was purple. <laughs> you fought an alien in space. <laughs> I'm lame compared, like I fought a Russian guy in a, like a rhinoceros machine. <laughs> You're amazing. Just to take it in for a minute. Yeah, 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 I can you, take it in. No, I can take you it in. are the amazing Spider-Man. You. All right guys, focus up. You feel that? Yeah. That was cute. That was a good scene. I like that. Oh, he looks so fucking good in yellow instead of blue. Oh, man, they're masked up. Here we go. Aww. I want to see, I want to see Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker. Nope. He hasn't, he hasn't mastered it. You ain't even the shit no more. Okay, great. Hey, there it is. That is so cool, they're fighting each other's villains. Okay. Woo! There it is, there's Sandman! We can help everyone! I don't care! Hey! We need Toad McGuire to remind him of the talk that they had. Bring him back to their side. No. I wanna hear the da -da 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 -da. Where's that music? The Avengers! Yeah. That's great! Thank you! What is that? <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you. What was that? Was that something? Was that like a like an inside thing that I'm not getting? Why do you say I love you? There it is! The ball whooping! Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I was right! I was right! They did edit out the Spider-Man in that shot for the trailer. I'm gonna lead him inside the statue. I'll meet you at the top. How are they communicating? This is like the Avengers logic where they could just hear each other. And... Got him. So is he, is he just back to normal Flint Marco? Yeah, Thomas Hayden Church! There's the music! Oh, he looks so much cool. He looks so much cooler than he did in the Amazing, in the Amazing Spider-Man Two. How are the other villains like occupied? Like I know, like the lizard speak. Oh hey! Scene from the Amazing Spider-Man Two. Oh no! Man, no I totally no, forgot no. about that. that is a lizard and we should... Hey, they're fighting in a lab again, just like they did in the Amazing Spider-Man One. Feel it again, Peter. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, he's good. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot he's a good guy. Okay, so they have Doc Ock on their side, at least. That's pretty good. Hey! There's the, there's the, uh, the cloud stuff that made him... I love all the callbacks to the old Spidey films. Where is he? <laughs> Talk to cars? Hey, it's Rezyphons! They did bring him back. Did you just open a portal? <laughs> yes, yes, sir, I did. Is anyone left? Oh, Green Goblin. You were never a nobody, Max. Yes, I was. Yes, You're I was. my eyes and ears. There's the music from the Amazing Spider-Man. Da na na na. I just thought she was gonna be black. <laughs> that's Miles Morales. Just wait. Gotta be a black Spider-Man. Oh Spider -Man. my God, that's so cool. You're all grown up. <laughs> he was all grown up in the old one. What are you talking about? Can the Spider-Man come out to play? Oh. There's a scene. Peter's got to save her. Are we going to get another Gwen Stacy? Oh! Oh, I, I was right! Andrew Garfield does save her! He makes sure that it's, it's not another Gwen Stacy! That's so cool! They actually did it! Oh, God. But he couldn't... Are you okay? He couldn't do it for his Gwen. Uh-oh. Oh, is that the Captain America shield? Well, that's funny. So, who- wait, wait, so who's coming through, though? I remember this is the part where he says they're coming through, but who's coming through? Oh, man. It's not gonna work. This is like- this is too much. This is like too much magic to try to contain. Tell me it was not that easy to beat Green Goblin. He just takes a bomb and just blows him up off out of the sky. How do you get him back to normal? Too weak to send me home to die. And too weak to kill him. I just want to kill you myself. Oh, okay. a boy. Ooh. What does this remind me of? I think this reminds- I think this was like the, uh, the Tobey Maguire one where he, like, kept hitting him and then, like, Norman said stop. I think that's what this reminds me of. Do it, Peter. Kill him. Here we go. <laughs> Yo, calm down. You can't kill. You're gonna end up killing Toby. Oh no. Is he? Is Toby gonna die here? No. Oh, Goblin's right behind him. Is Toby gonna die? Oh no. Oh god. My money was on Andrew personally. You are the one that killed her. That was the serum. Yep. <laughs> I imagine Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield are gonna be like side by side on Tobey Maguire, like Tobey Maguire and MJ were when Harry Osborne died. That thought just like popped into my brain for some reason. Yeah, I'm gonna dump and stab him. Oh god. Oh yeah! Harry Osborne did stab him. Are there people in this? Who the hell are they? Who's coming through? What the hell? What the hell is that? Was that a guy with like a staff? They're here because of you. What the hell? Who's here? Who else could be here? I thought it was the original Spider-Man, but... They're coming here because of me, right? Because I'm Peter Parker? Oh, everybody who knew I... Everybody who knows, like, Spider-Man. Make everyone forget. Me. You gotta understand, that would mean that everyone who knows and loves you, it would be as though you never existed. Oh, shit. Wait, so are these just random people that are coming through? Like, because they know Spider-Man, and that's what he said before, like, everybody from the other universes who know Spider-Man are gonna come through? So is this his ultimate sacrifice right here? I'll see you around. No, he won't. It's not good. This is Thank so cool. You. It's what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So is Tobey Maguire fine? Like, he's gonna survive, right? You're in so much pain, huh? I am. They became MCU characters. You would never see jokes like that in the original. They just became MCU characters. Joke machines. Oh, MCU, I hate your style so much. You're gonna forget who I am. This is what it means to be Spider-Man, sacrificing everything so that for the greater good. This is honestly, like, sadder than, like, the Aunt May death. I honestly feel more for this than the Aunt May death. 
And big kiss right here. I really hate magic. Stop with these lines, man. I hate magic. Stop! They're such misplaced lines, man. There we go. They're all they're all disappearing. There's Kurt Connors. Here we go. Peace! Oh. Oh man. My name is Peter Parker, and I like a coffee, please. Yeah. God, this is gonna be so much to drop on her. Am I either the engineers, the mascot? Oh, right, right, right. I should probably know that. <laughs> you got in. Does she remember? Is this like there's like these long, awkward pauses? No. Oh. See, this is way sadder than the anime thing. This I can get behind. Does she remember? Oh, this is Aunt May. Yep. Does he remember? How'd you know her? Oh, well. I lost a good friend a while back. Tony. Felt like this. Everyone that she helped. Who did, who did she help? She didn't even know Peter's girlfriend. Like, who the... What person did she help besides Peter? Dude, they're, they're trying to make... They're trying to act like Aunt May some sort of, like, integral character. But she's not. So he's by himself now, huh? Oh, from the first movie. So he's just gonna keep being Spider-Man. Even though no one remembers. Pretty good final swing. This is the... Yeah, that was the final swing. That was pretty good. I'm actually alright with that ending. Him making a big sacrifice like that, and then continuing on as with his duties as Spider-Man. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, let's see if there's a post credit scene. Okay. Here we go. Oh my god! Okay, okay, I, Get I, I, out! That... Tom Hardy? Venom? Hey, maybe I maybe I should go to New York and speak to this uh Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Yeah. What is happening? No! No, we just got here! No, don't go! What the heck was that? Is that part of a symbiote? What the heck happened to him? I thought we were gonna get a scene, a post trad scene of Charlie Cox, honestly, as uh, Matt Murdock, Daredevil. That's I thought we were gonna get a post credit scene of him. Maybe there's another scene. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. My money's on Charlie Cox. We tampered with the stability of space-time. What is this, a trailer for the next Doctor Strange movie? Don't we always get, like, a post credit scene? Oh yeah, that's the evil Doctor Strange. I saw, like, pictures of him on the internet. Okay, well. That was good. Alright, so, Spider-Man No Way Home was pretty good. And it was a hell of a lot of fun. But then again, I just watched Eternals, so my perspective might be a bit skewed. But no, seriously, this was a pretty good movie. I had problems with it, just like I do with any other movie, but my reasons are pretty personal, and I knew I would enjoy it enough with Toby and Andrew making their returns. And a lot of people are debating whether this is the best Spider-Man movie or not, and if you ask me, no, it's really not. I would say this might be my third or fourth favorite Spider-Man movie. I don't know, this is definitely Tom Holland's best Spider-Man movie, I'll tell you that much. Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Verse are still tied for me for being the best Spider-Man movie, but No Way Home falls pretty close behind. And that's a little disappointing to me because I was really hoping that No Way Home would be the best Spider-Man movie, and it would be the first Spidey movie that I could give a 10 out of 10 to. And I really thought that's what would happen. When I heard all the rumors and saw all the leaks of Toby and Andrew returning, I thought to myself, okay, it's a done deal. Toby and Andrew are coming back, wrap it up, this is going to be the best Spider-Man movie ever. And I tried really hard to stop myself from getting my hopes up too high. I explained it a bit in my Eternals video, but anytime I start thinking about how much I'm going to like a movie before actually watching it, I try to ignore those expectations because I know it's going to result in me either being really disappointed that a movie wasn't as good as I thought it would be, or if I thought a movie was already going to be bad, I'm only going to hate it more when I actually watch it. Either way, it's not so good. It rarely ends with me thinking a movie is going to be bad, but then being pleasantly surprised when I like it more than I thought I would. 
I put such high expectations on Spider-Verse after hearing all the critical acclaim and seeing all the Academy Award nominations, and I think that definitely played a big part in me not liking it as much as I could have after I watched it the first time. Although, I will say that since then, upon multiple rewatches, I've liked it more and more each time to the point that now it's tied with Spider-Man 2 as my favorite Spidey movie at a 9 out of 10. But if I didn't go into Spider-Verse, thinking that it was going to be the best movie I've ever seen, it honestly might have been at a perfect 10 by now. Anyways, I'm getting off track. Yes, No Way Home wasn't the best Spidey movie, but it was still pretty good. I think the best and most memorable part of this movie was obviously Toby and Andrew. Their returning to play the web crawler alongside the current iteration, Tom Holland, was pretty cool. And my favorite part of this was the fact that they weren't just in this movie for fan service. Because a lot of people are saying that this is just a fan service movie, and I don't think that's entirely accurate. I think this serves almost the same purpose as Avengers Endgame in that this movie acted as a love letter to the character of Spider-Man, the way Endgame acted as a love letter to the entire MCU. Yes, there is some fan service involved. I mean, Endgame literally has us going back and revisiting all the prior movies to see how we got to this point. And No Way Home brought back the Spider-Man from a lot of our childhoods and made so many references to past Spider-Man movies, but I think all of it serves a purpose in the movie. And that was my favorite part of Toby and Andrew returning, is that it actually served a purpose. Toby and Andrew served a purpose to the movie, they served a purpose to Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and they even served a purpose to themselves and their own interpretations of Spider-Man. I like Toby playing that sort of wise eldest brother role, and I like the fact that he was able to impart his wisdom of not seeking revenge onto Tom Holland based on his own experiences as Spider-Man. He was able to draw from his experiences chasing after that robber and chasing after Sandman in order to avenge his uncle's death, and he took the lessons he learned from that to help Tom Holland realize that revenge wasn't the answer in avenging a loved one. You could even argue that he took his experience of seeing Norman Osborn die at the hands of his own glider in Spider-Man 1 and used that to prevent Tom Holland from killing Norman again with his own glider. There were just so many full circle moments in this movie, but of course, you can't talk about full circle moments without talking about the best one where Andrew Garfield redeemed his failure to save Gwen Stacy at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and caught MJ during the final battle to give himself some closure after Gwen's death. Me and a lot of other people who analyzed the trailer and started speculating as to what happened during this scene were really hoping that we would be right in our prediction that Andrew Garfield would make the save, since this this MJ fall clearly mirrored Gwen Stacy's. And the fact that they actually did it just makes me so happy. I was also right, kind of, in my prediction that when it came to the Sinister Six, since there were only five villains that they showed in the trailer, Doc Ock, Goblin, Lizard, Electro, and Sandman, there would be one more villain that we had yet to see. And I predicted Venom just based on what we had seen in Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. And, well... I was sort of right. He did show up, just not in the final battle as part of the Sinister Six. Actually, you know, I think I read somewhere that he actually was meant to show up during the final battle, but they axed that idea and opted for the post credit scene instead. But now, I think it's time we talked about some of the stuff that I didn't like in this movie, most of which are super personal. I'd say the biggest disappointment of the movie for me, personally, was Toby and Andrew's entrances. And again, this is super personal, but I just imagined for months now some super cool epic entrance for the return of the original Spider-Man, something akin to when all the Avengers returned in Endgame with the swelling, pounding music and awesome visuals. But in this movie, Ned just brings them in randomly to his house. No music, no fanfare, they just walk in through a portal, and that's it. That's what we were waiting over a year to see. 
ever since all those rumors started coming out. And I think the reason why these returns were a bit underwhelming is because I didn't see this movie in theaters. And that's another thing that I heard is that this movie isn't really designed to be watched anywhere else but a theater full of screaming fans. And for a guy that saw Endgame in theaters, I can tell you that at least part of the thrill of seeing all the Avengers return was in the audience reaction to it. It was way more fun being a part of an audience cheering and screaming at what was happening on screen than sitting alone cheering and screaming by myself. But the thing is, even though seeing Endgame in theaters definitely helped those big moments feel more impactful, I've watched it by myself too, and I got a lot of the same feelings just sitting there watching it by myself that I had when I watched it with an audience. And that's because if a scene is done well, it can still get you pretty hyped, even if you don't have other people around you. But I don't think that's really the case with No Way Home. I think No Way Home really only works with an audience. Endgame works both with and without an audience. And granted, it's a little hard to compare the two movies because I saw Endgame both with and without an audience, but with No Way Home, I only saw it without an audience. I never went to go see it in theaters, so I probably shouldn't compare the two movies because they're not on an even playing field as far as my viewing experience goes, but I just think a movie like Endgame does its big scenes so much better. I get so hyped every time I watch Endgame, even just by myself, and I already know there are some scenes in No Way Home that are just not as exciting the second time around and the main reason why I was getting excited in the reaction is not so much that the scene is really epic as is the case with Endgame but because I was seeing it for the first time. This is all kind of hard to explain as far as where my hype is derived from but basically what I'm saying is that Endgame gets you hyped because of the audience reaction and because of how epic the scene is on its own which is why even if you watch it by yourself you can still get pretty hyped. No Way Home gets you hyped only because of the audience reaction, not so much because the scenes are really epic. When you actually watch some of the scenes that are supposed to get the audience really hyped and you watch them back by yourself, you'll notice that they're not really that epic on your own without an audience because there are a lot of long, quiet, awkward pauses that give room for the audience to clap and cheer, whereas with Endgame, those scenes that are supposed to get the audience really hyped are still pretty epic even when you watch them back by yourself. I've been thinking about it, and I honestly think I could make this movie more epic just by editing some things around and adding the right music in the right places. How about instead of Toby and Andrew returning halfway through the movie, they show up during the final battle instead? If that happened, the only things that may be changed or cut out from the movie is a bit of fan service and the scene where they make all the antidotes to the villains, which I'm sure Tom Holland could have done by himself anyways, he's a smart kid. Some people might say that we wouldn't get that scene on the roof of Peter's school, but truthfully, that scene is kind of there for Toby and Andrew to, one, motivate Tom to continue on to the final battle, which Tom just as easily could have done on his own anyways with his lust for vengeance on the goblin, and two, Toby and Andrew tell Tom about their experiences with rage and revenge, which might be important if Tom didn't just ignore that advice and try to kill the goblin at the the end anyways. Toby tells Tom that killing the person responsible for his Uncle Ben's death didn't make him feel better, so Tom shouldn't do it for his Aunt May. And Andrew tells Tom that he got rageful after Gwen Stacy's death, and he didn't want to see Tom end up like that. But in the end, Tom just gets rageful anyways and tries to get revenge anyways. So this scene almost didn't matter. Toby and Andrew's inclusion in the movie only really matters in the end when Andrew saves MJ and Toby stops Tom from killing the goblin. So if we eliminate the rooftop scene, the laboratory scene, and some of the fan service, we could have Toby and Andrew enter this movie during the final battle. And the way that I would do it would be Tom fighting the Sinister Six by himself at first while Ned and MJ try to do this whole thing with the portal and trying to close it. But how about while Ned's trying to close the portal, he accidentally keeps making new ones appear? 
MJ takes the fall, Tom's beaten up after fighting the Sinister Six by himself, and either doesn't have the energy to catch her, or tries to catch her, but the Sinister Six stop him, just like it happens in the movie. Then, Ned, still trying to close the portal, accidentally opens a new one, and out comes Andrew Garfield. How much more epic would that be? Andrew returns to his triumphant theme music and redeems himself by saving MJ. Now we got two Spider-Men and as they face off with the Sinister Six, they could be all, you're still outnumbered, Peter. Then we see the glow from a portal behind Tom and Andrew and the music starts swelling. Come on, that would be so cool! I didn't even change some elements either. Andrew still saves MJ in my version, and both Spider-Men still come through portals in my version. But I just added some music and put their entrances in better spots, and I think it just makes it so much more epic. So yes, some of the big moments in the movie were kind of underwhelming. But yet another thing that I didn't really like was Aunt May's death. I said it many times during the reaction, but Aunt May's death meant absolutely nothing to me. I mean, out of all the times we've seen Peter Parker lose a loved one, this was probably the least impactful. And I think one of the reasons why, besides the reasons that I already mentioned during the reaction, like there not really being any scenes between Peter and May that show the importance she held in Peter's life, and the fact that this series sort of relegated Aunt May to being nothing more than eye candy, Besides all those fucking problems, another reason why this death wasn't impactful is because her role as Peter's parental figure was kind of already taken. Because I feel like we saw this scene already in Avengers Endgame. The thing with the MCU's version of Peter is that they already gave him that parental figure that died in the form of Tony Stark. Tony already filled that role that's usually reserved for an Uncle Ben or an Aunt May by doing everything they would normally do, from giving Peter good advice to motivating Peter to continue on with his duties as Spider-Man after their death. So the fact that they tried to pull a Spider-Man loved one death on us again, this time with a character that got almost no character development and was always sort of taking a backseat to the other people in Peter's life, like Tony or Ned or MJ, is just pathetic. It's just pathetic how you tried to make Aunt May's death seem like more than it actually was, because she was never a prominent figure at all. What else didn't I like? I didn't really like how some of the characters from the previous Spidey movies ended up being lighter and jokier than they originally were, and this could honestly go into a broader conversation on something I don't like about the MCU in general, which is how lighthearted and childish it is, but I'll try to keep it brief. Basically, the MCU has this writing style, this signature style that I think everybody has noticed by this point. But they have this writing style where I almost feel like they don't really take their characters that seriously. This is partially the reason why I think almost none of the villains are really that menacing, with the exception of maybe like Thanos. But every superhero in the Marvel Universe is always cracking jokes and being awkward. I am smart. I know. Okay. You'll never- You never what? You didn't finish! And the villains do the same exact thing. Nobody has to break anything. Clearly you've never made an omelet. And that makes it so that I can't take anything in the MCU seriously. At least with DC, they're actually taking their characters seriously. Even if something is ridiculous and over the top, they don't treat it like it is. Let's take Aquaman for example, and let's look at the scene where Black Manta makes his first appearance. Black Manta shows up and Aquaman asks, who the hell are you? And then when Aquaman eventually figures it out, Black Manta's like, that's right, it's me, I've come for revenge, I've come for blood! Despite how ridiculous this is that a guy dressed in bug-themed armor that can shoot laser beams out of his eyes is going after Aquaman, neither of them address how stupid this is. They just fight each other like everything's perfectly normal. 
And that's what I like about DC, is the fact that they can take these outlandish scenarios and make them their universe's version of normal. If this scene were to take place in the MCU, I guarantee you that Aquaman would have made a joke about Black Manta looking like some sort of mutant bug, and when Manta starts shooting laser beams, Aquaman would have said something along the lines of, You, you shoot lasers now? You, you breathe fire? And this is one of my biggest complaints about the MCU, is that nobody is taking anything seriously. This makes it so that the audience can't take any of the characters seriously. When you see Lizard making jokes like, Oh, there's no way MJ is Peter's girlfriend, no way. I don't like that. Because now it's even harder for me to take the Lizard seriously because he's just turning into a joke machine. Same thing with Toby and Andrew towards the end with that really awkward joke. <sighs> You're in so much pain, huh? I am. Yeah. That was such clear MCU-style dialogue that I just had to point out in the reaction how different it was to anything Topi and Andrew said in their own series. But because they're now in the MCU, their dialogue obviously had to change to adapt to the MCU style. This is also the reason that I'm terrified of what the MCU is going to do to my man, Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil. For those of you who haven't seen the Daredevil series, which just recently moved to Disney+, Plus, I would seriously recommend you watch it, because if it's not one of the greatest, it is just the greatest Marvel TV show, hands down. It's like not even close. Your other Marvel TV shows just can't compare. Your WandaVisions, your Lokis, your Jessica Jones, your Iron Fists. <laughs> okay, okay, nobody liked that show. But seriously, Daredevil is like the best show ever. So I was kind of surprised because I heard not a whole lot of people knew who he was when he showed up on screen. But either way, I'm terrified at what the MCU might do to Daredevil now that it's confirmed that he's officially in the MCU with the likes of Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and all that. Because I went into it when I reviewed Hawkeye, and that show brought back the main villain from Daredevil, Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin. But the MCU kind of ruined Kingpin by making him... Well, let's just say he's not as intimidating as he used to be. I'll keep it short, but basically what I said was that in the Daredevil show, which was rated for mature audiences, he was chopping dudes' heads off with car doors, and he made for a really intimidating villain. But when they brought him into the MCU, which is kind of known for being a lot more family-friendly and lighthearted and childish, they put him in the Hawkeye show, and you could obviously tell he started to get a lot lighter. And I don't mean size-wise. I mean tonally, he started to get a lot lighter. Actually, that doesn't sound right either. What I'm saying is Kingpin just wasn't as intimidating as he used to be. He went from this guy that was like, haha, look at me, I'm gonna break this guy's back against this wall. And now he's like, haha, look at me, I'm just going to get blown up by this rookie Hawkeye and capped by this deaf girl. It's just kind of sad what they did to Kingpin and Hawkeye, and now that they have one of my favorite superheroes in Daredevil, like, I seriously love him a lot. That Daredevil show made him, like, my third favorite superhero behind Spider-Man and Batman, but now that Daredevil's here, I'm just so scared they're going to ruin him too and turn him into some kind of awkward joke machine like they do with all the characters in their universe. But I will say that I know for sure they did something right with at least one character, and that character is Norman Osborn, aka the Green Goblin. Despite me not liking the fact that he ditched his old costume because I think that old costume is just iconic, I can really appreciate his character in this movie. Which is kind of weird because initially I was not too hot on him in this movie. I thought he was good, but I just didn't think he was nearly as good as he was in the original Spider-Man movie. But admittedly, that was probably just my nostalgia talking, as well as my dislike for what the MCU did to all the Spider-Man characters in general. Like I said, my preference for the old Green Goblin was probably due in large part to the fact that I was just a little babby when I saw that movie. So Green Goblin seemed more menacing to me at that time than the new Green Goblin is to me now. But now as an adult, looking back at the old Green Goblin, he isn't so much scary as he is funny. <laughs> 
like I remember when I was a kid, I was so upset watching Goblin beat the piss out of Tobey Maguire in that cemetery. But now it's just hilarious. So yeah, I like what they did with the Goblin in this movie, and I think he was definitely terrifying enough with the scenes that he had and the fact that he was just killing people for fun. Doc Ock was actually fine in this movie too, like he wasn't too jokey. Electro is actually better in this movie, but that's not really saying much since I barely even remember him being in Amazing Spider-Man 2 with how many subplots that movie had. And as far as Sandman and the Lizard went, I felt like they had a less prominent presence in the movie compared to the other villains, but you can't really fault the movie for that because they technically weren't in the movie. I guess Thomas Hayden Church and Reese Ifans didn't want to return as these characters or they were already working on other projects, but whatever the reason was, to get around it, Marvel had them just voice the characters instead and worked with archival footage and CGI to make the audience believe believe the actors had really returned. And honestly, they should be glad that it was these two characters, because a lizard and a sand humanoid creature is pretty much going to be mostly CGI anyways, so you can definitely get away with disguising the placeholders as the original actors. But also, there were times where you could just so easily tell that they were using archival footage, like the one with Sandman during the final battle when Toby turns him back to normal. That was just so obviously the same shot from Spider-Man 3 that I kind of got taken out of the movie for a second. But overall, I think altogether, the Sinister Six worked pretty well, which is pretty surprising given the track record of previous Spidey movies with multiple villains. But I think what made this movie different than the others is the fact that because these villains were already established in the prior movies, we didn't need to waste any time in this movie developing these villains or muddying up the plot with the character development. But I'm going to wrap it up now because this video is getting pretty long. I really like the ending to this movie. Peter realizing that he essentially had to give up his friends, his family, and his entire existence in order to ensure the safety of the world was something that was so heroic and selfless that you almost couldn't help but appreciate Tom Holland's Spider-Man as a character and as a hero. Which, if you know me and my track record, is something I never thought I would say. I still think that he's the worst Spider-Man, but the thing is, I'm actually open to liking him more now because of that ending. Peter starting his life over in this crappy new apartment and carrying on with his responsibilities as Spider-Man, solo, without any connection to a single friend, family member, or Avenger is very reminiscent of the old Spider-Man, which is something I really like. I really like that Tom Holland's Spider-Man is finally starting to feel like the Spider-Man I know and love. And that's another thing, is that the fact that he's starting to truly feel like Spider-Man now, after three movies, makes me believe that this home trilogy, as it's called, was really the origin story for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And that's kind of interesting, because we rarely get three movies to flesh out an entire origin story. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, I just think that it's pretty interesting. I mean, it makes sense too, considering that it was in this third movie that Tom Holland finally got that with great power comes great responsibility speech, while Toby and Andrew both got it in their first movie. I also mentioned it in my reaction that I kind of liked how Aunt May was the one who gave that speech to him, rather than Uncle Ben, because a lot of people are still upset that Uncle Ben was never shown in this universe, and the fact that Aunt May gave this speech to Peter kind of suggests that at least in this universe, Uncle Ben never existed. Which is fine, I mean, I really don't think Spider-Man's entire existence is predicated on Uncle Ben, because I think Peter really just needed the lesson of with great power comes great responsibility, and it didn't really matter who that lesson came from. I mean, why can't it come from Aunt May? Uncle Ben's existence in the Spider-Man universe was pretty much just made up of that speech and the fact that he provides the motivation for Peter Parker to be Spider-Man. And if Peter can get that speech and find that motivation from somewhere else, then I really don't think Uncle Ben needs to exist, at least in this universe. And yeah, that's basically it. 
overall, it was a pretty good movie. It's not the best Spider-Man movie, but it's definitely Tom Holland's best showing as the wall crawler. And now that he's finally turning into the classic Spider-Man that we all know and love, I think there's definitely the possibility that I'm going to like him more in the next trilogy of Spider-Man films. So we're going to end this by giving Spider-Man No Way Home a 8.5 out of 10.